to welcome back uh, uh, members of the media, our, uh, our staff, and our, uh, our partners, uh, continuation of what's a really exciting day for, for the Rangers organization, uh, to welcome Marcus Simeon and his family to our family, and, and we're excited to have all of you here. Uh, it, it's not too often that you get to say um, somebody with, with the on-field accolades of, of Marcus, uh, the all-star, gold glove, silver slugger, uh, MVP candidate, the Major League home run record holder at, at second base, all the things that he's accomplished on the field that, that legitimately get outshined by the type of human being he is, uh, what he stands for at, uh, with his family and, and the values that they stand for, uh, the type of teammate and example that we believe he's going to be for, for uh, so many uh, uh, Rangers current and, and future. Um, we had heard unbelievable things about Marcus uh, throughout our, our due diligence process, dating back years at this point. Uh, obviously, our, our group has competed against him across the field for years in Oakland. In Toronto, he's, he's been a leader in both of those clubhouses. This is a, uh, a, a talented individual that has truly uh, made himself better every step of the way uh, as he's been uh, exposed to different resources in the game. Um, you, know, you see some people that, that maybe don't take full advantage of him. This is somebody that has taken advantage of everything that, that he's had access to. Um, the drive, the pride, the competitiveness uh, just really stood out to us. And uh, this is our, Marcus was our, our first in-person meeting uh, in, our, in our free agent um, process here a couple weeks ago. And uh, again, we had high expectations going into it, but we were blown away. And, and Woody, CY, and myself, uh, walked away from that meeting and said, uh, this is our guy. This is our guy, and, and we were just absolutely uh, thrilled to, to think about him in a Rangers uniform and, and what he's going to mean for our organization, our, our team, and, uh, and, our, and our fans in our community. So um, I'm going to turn it over to CY here, but uh, very excited to be part of this here with Marcus today. Thanks, J.D. Um, there's not a whole lot I can add because I think that what J.D. just summarized in terms of Marcus, not only the player, that speaks for itself, but the, the person, uh, the leader, um, the family man, um, all the intangibles that we could ask for in a player and a leader, uh, Marcus embodies. And I think that is a huge factor in our decision um, to pursue Marcus in free agency. And you know, I can speak on behalf of the organization when I say we are unbelievably excited to welcome Marcus, his wife Tara, uh, his boys Isaiah, Joshua, and Eli here, mom and dad, uh, Damian and Tracy. Uh, welcome to the Ranger family. Uh, we feel like Marcus is the right person to help take us to where we are lo looking to go in winning championships and doing something that no Texas Ranger team has ever done. And I spoke earlier as to how the presentation went in these meetings, and I think Marcus gave perhaps the best answer and was all in saying, that doesn't, I'm not afraid of that. He's a winner, and that's why he's here. So it gives me great pleasure to announce the newest Texas Ranger, Marcus Simeon. And raise your hand. Emily. Marcus, the front office guys have talked about how this, you know, challenge isn't for everyone. A team coming off 102 losses. What was it about this situation and this organization in particular that intrigued you and, and made you say yes and, and being the, the first one to do so? Yes. First of all, I want to thank God. I want to thank my family um, just for being with me every step of the way, um, keeping me going. Um, you know, when I met CY and I met JD and Woody in the meeting, I when I you know I was so impressed just with the way they talked to me as 
see why and Woody as former players, just relating to you know everything they've been through, and now they're they're in charge and and um, looking for players that they want and that they want to you know to be a part of a winning culture and a winning team. That yes, it it hasn't been like that the last couple of years, but let's accelerate that process and let you know, that's what they told me. And I I love the stadium. I love you know the idea of my family moving here raising my kids here and, and playing middle infield at a high level for a long time. So that all those things went into this decision and at the end of the day we, we knew this was right for us. Uh, Evan. Marcus, the challenges that they talked about and that they presented to you, um, what most stood out for you in terms of, of what resonated most for you of their presentation? I think it's the vision, um, what they provide for players. Um, you look at this clubhouse and these resources. This is something that, you know, I got a taste of last year uh, with Toronto. Coming from Oakland to Toronto, you get a taste of, you know, what other organizations do for players. And I asked a lot of questions about that to to these guys. And the answers were, you know, blew me away. Just at the things that they can provide for, um, you know, a veteran like me and a young guy, you know, coming up in the system. To me, I, I envision a culture that, um, you know, where all young players and veterans can use these resources and get themselves better to win a championship. Just an inclusive culture, and I'm excited to help build that. Noe. A uh, question for Marcus and a question for Scott. Marcus, first off, I, I know you had worked with Ron Washington, and he had a bunch of things to say about you uh, earlier today when I asked him about it. He said, character person. Um, can you explain what you'll be able to bring to this clubhouse? And for Scott, uh, Ranger management have been criticized the past few seasons for not spending. When you got into conversations to bring Marcus here, what did you feel that you were able to get from management here, the ownership, to, uh, to bring your player here for an opportunity to, to get a contract and possibly play in the World Series? Yeah, Ron Washington is the most influential baseball man in my life. Um, you know, yes, it was mostly defense. When defense wins championships, I think that the, the point in time when I met Wash, I wasn't in a – you know, confident mindset defensively. When I left that season and got into the next season, I was closer. Um, you look at the, the the middle infielder I am today, very confident. Um, and I still work on the things that that we, we did back in 2015. I still talk to him every single, you know, season, just throughout the year, just checking in, just he's making sure I'm still doing my stuff. Uh, he obviously got his his ring that he was so close to getting here, and um, you know what he told me about this place is it, it's a great place to play, it's a great place to raise a family, and he's seen this ball club at its best. That's what I wanted to be a part of. First, I'd like to thank Ray Davis and John and C Y and Woody. Um, for Marcus, Marcus is a very thorough player. He's a very studied player, and he came to this process with really uh, an awareness of being open to a process. And from ownership on down, when we met, it became something that was a vision of a lot of hard work, a lot of commitment to build a facility like this, to hire the people that can benefit, surround the players with both traditional concepts of family and understanding for their children, but also in the locker room, the most advanced technology resources available to allow the players to continue what they do and grow. And I think uh, in answer to your question, the, the commitment sometimes in this game is difficult. They really are. It's very competitive. But the idea for Marcus was, while a lot of suitors came, he trusted the fact that ownership and, and the executives of this team had a vision that he thought could be executed. 
What else, Skyler? Marcus, how much did the uh, looming lockout and the deadline associated with that uh, influence your decision to get it done now? Well, I mean, not much really. Just kind of the, the timing of it worked out to where we were ready to make a decision. You know, for me, last season, we're coming off of 2020 season, free agency was a little bit different, especially with the COVID uh, shortened season performance. I think this year was a, you know, a situation where we received some calls early and had some interest at what we were asking for. And when we started meeting, we, it was became easier to make, you know, to narrow a decision down uh, for Tara and I. I think, like I said, what it came down to was an opportunity to build something. Um, you look at the amount of years, seven years, you know, I'm so excited to see what the, you know, the last year of this seven-year contract looks like, where we are. Um, yes, we're in a brand new stadium now, but how are we playing? How are we doing? What's the culture? Who, you know, what prospects have turned into superstars? Um, so all that went into it. Other questions? Uh, Jeff. You keep saying middle infielder. Do you have a position yet with the Rangers? Yeah, I think I'm playing second. Um, you know, early when I first signed, I was the first guy, um, and I had done both. So, you know, last year I felt great at second base. Obviously, defensively, I was able to win a Gold Glove and swung the bat better. So, it's a place that I've. I'm still learning, but I feel like I, I learned some things really fast and I was able to execute them um, you know, with the coaching staff in Toronto. I'm, I'm really happy to work with, with the guys here and see what else I can do. Let's go to Stefan. Marcus, you referenced uh, the fact that both, both Chris's are former players. What, what was it about it, those conversations with those guys that really attracted you? Well, their vision was the same. You know, they, they want to build something right now and change this culture, turn it into a winning culture right now. Um, yes, when a, a current player talks to a front office member and they're a player, it makes things, you know, a lot easier because he's he's been exactly where I've been um, for a number of years. We played against each other, um, and then Woody, you know, a, a really good big league player as well that you can come to and ask him anything you want about you know certain situations you're feeling in the moment, and he's been there. He can give you an answer, and he sees it from the dugout right now, but. He's been there before. I think that that will help all of us. Uh, Chris. Hey, Woody, this one's for you. Um, not only the impact that Marcus will have on your lineup, but to stay on the, you know, on, on the culture train, what kind of impact does Marcus make, not only, like I said, not only in the lineup, but in the clubhouse and on the rest of the team? Jeez, oh, that's a... Uh... <laughs> I think when you look at the what we want all of our players to become, Marcus represents. And I, and I say that with all honesty, like who this guy is, what he stands for. Um, you look at his family and, and how much things mean to him. Um, we just talked with Cole Calhoun about the same thing. And to, to feel that from him and to see how, how much he's improved over the course of his career, and that was just through sheer work. I watched it. Uh, you know, I was out on the opposing dugout watching him work every day when things weren't great or when things were good. I mean, this, this guy's relentless. Um, and then to hear all the, the, the background, you know, I talked to the guys in Oakland, talked to the guys in Toronto, guys that I really trusted who understand, you know, the vision that I have, that we have, you know, for what we want our players to be. And then to hear Marcus, like JD and CY both said in that meeting, uh, we all came out of it going, I had the highest expectations you can possibly have for a player going into that meeting. And he exceeded them. So that should tell you something. And uh, the impact he's going to have, he doesn't have to say a word. 
honestly. Um, I'm not asking Marcus to be anybody but himself, um, and that's going to be enough. Um, but the fact that he says, you know, to me and to, to us, like, I want to lead. I want to share these things. I want to talk to our players. I can't wait to build something. This, these are things that aren't normal for players. Most players are pretty, you know, hey, I want to make sure I take care of mine. I want to make sure that I, I'm, I'm the best player I can possibly be. He's going to do that. I trust that. The way this guy plays the game, he doesn't take a pitch off. It's all the things that I've asked our players for three years to do. And listen, our players did that. But now they have an example on the field. We have a pillar on the middle of the field that everybody looks up to. Um, that, you know, frankly, he'll put his arm around players and say, hey, like, I've been in your shoes. You know, I've been, I've struggled at times. I've been great at times. Like, you know, this guy's one of the best players in baseball. And to have him on our team, I'm, you know, it, it is a little bit like I keep getting – waiting for somebody to pinch me and tell me this isn't real because this is the type of player that you build around and he wants that it's, it's, it's just a rare combination of uh of a lot of things um and i'm like you know i mean i think he's a perfect fit for our culture and our team and just deeply grateful that he chose us and i told him that he was the first real pillar to kind of cement himself in a texas Rangers uniform and uh, that's very special to myself to jd cy the entire organization that he took a leap of faith on us because he believed in what we're building. Let's go back to Evan. Hey, Marcus. Chris, kind of I talk a little bit about this when he said that he laid out everything to you and you said you're not, or maybe it was JD, said you're not afraid of any of that. You said you were not afraid of any of that. But as this team is laying out where it's coming from and where it's going, Scott mentioned you were open to the whole process, but was there any skepticism about taking the meeting with the Rangers in the first place? And how did you react when they started laying out a very transparent vision of where they were and where they're going? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's always been a place that I love playing in as a road player. So a lot of times you go through the process and you say, well, where did I, where did I play well? Or, you know, um, you know, where did I like playing? That was number one. Um, you know, number two, of course, you look at the record last year or whatever. Um, but like I said, the seven-year deal part of it, you, you have to look past what, you know, where the team is right now sometimes. I think that uh, what I heard was that they wanted to add top-of-the-market players, um, not player, players. And when you hear that and you look at the, the names out there and you imagine – playing middle infield with Corey Seager, <laughs> um, I think it, it makes things a little bit sweeter. Um, we, we talked about it as a family. And from a family, from a family point of view, the, Dallas, the DFW area checks all the boxes for us. Um, yes, I got to play in my hometown in Oakland, which was the, the best thing any major league player could ever do. Um, to play in front of my parents and my family so much. But, um, you know, being part of the Rangers and knowing that you know, this new beginning for our family is the reality is so nice for us. What else? Back to Emily. It was the guy on your left or the guy on your right, but I heard on a radio interview today, and they, they mentioned you as kind of a, not, not a hybrid, but, traits of Michael Young and Adrian Beltre, and those are two really well-respected big names around these parts as far as their leadership and what they provided in the clubhouse as well as on the field. Is that a, you know, when you talk about that leadership aspect, is that a position you've been in before that you feel like you'll excel in, and how do you view your leadership style? Yeah, I mean, those two are, I mean, I played a lot against Adrian, but I, I watched Michael play so much and I admire his game as a middle infielder um, but yeah I think for me I've learned over time how to lead it's not something that you know I was necessarily born with I think I've always been fairly quiet but as my my game started to develop my leadership came with it I think that when you you know for me playing seven full seasons in the major leagues um, I've learned a lot. I've struggled a lot. I've gotten better at those things. Uh, I've propelled myself into, you know, conversation of these guys we're talking about, these free agents. Um, 
and it took a lot of learning. I think that when you learn something, you're so eager to share it with someone else who you who you may who you see is going through what you went through. Um, and I think there's probably some guys in this clubhouse now that benefit from some of the things I've learned and that I can share with them. Other questions, Kennedy. Hey, Marcus. Uh, I'm curious, what did you learn about yourself, I guess, that year in Toronto? You know, you're playing alongside young stars like Vlad and Bo Bichette and all of that. You know, what did you learn about yourself during that year? Well, I learned a lot about, I mean, there was a lot. I think physically, I learned a lot about how to take care of myself even better. You know, I'm always, I always take pride in playing 162 games if I can. But what does that mean? That means you have to take care of your body every single day. You need to eat right. You need to stretch. You need to put in a lot of extra time, you know, time away from my family. Honestly, it's, there's so many hours that go into it when you want to be the best and you want to be the most prepared and you want to be the healthiest. And in Toronto, I, I was you know, open to learning about what they, what they do for their players in the weight room, in the training room. Um, look at the lineup we had there. You know, a lot of guys, we spent a lot of time in the cage working and learning together. Um, yes, they were young players, but they were, they were smart. Uh, so I was learning from them. They were kind of watching me, how I went about my business. And I think that we all stayed pretty healthy and hit well. So you look at, you know, the season overall, we didn't make the playoffs, but I think those, those younger guys became uh, better players because Okay, uh, let's go to Evan and then over to Jared. Um, Scott, this one is actually for you. Uh, and you may have some personal experience with this, but the hard part for a team that's struggling and going after free agents is getting that first big guy to come through the door. Um, in convincing Marcus to come here, how much easier does it make for the Rangers to get uh, traction with other guys? Well, I think a lot easier. That's mainly because when Marcus signed here, he called me three times a day to make sure that Corey signed here. So, <laughs> and when you have an important client doing that, it, believe me, it's impactful. So, um, in the player community, of course, it's it's really about how they evaluate the people they're going to be playing with and what they can do collectively to achieve their objective. And when John and CY and Woody came to us and sat down. They were most earnest about, we're not here to sign players. We're here to sign the best players. And I think that message impressed upon Marcus and Tara to the point where they were very serious. We talked about, you know, ownerships approval to their plan and what they've done and how this has been really evolving since CY and John got together. And it became something, I think, where in the end, Marcus, and again, it's very hard to win players. There's a lot of teams that want players that demonstrate what Marcus has as leadership. But to really win the day with them, it's about what Marcus believed from the people he was talking to and dealing with. And I think John and CY's message was something that Marcus and Tara discussed and said, we, we trust these people. And certainly um, they have, in a very short period of time, backed up what they told Marcus they would do. Jared? Marcus, uh, not to re-ask a question you've been asked, but to not only choose to come here, but to do so without any opt-outs. What was it about this that, that made you feel comfortable to make that sort of a commitment with no room through the, uh, throughout the seven years to, to bail out if uh, the situation presented itself? Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't really thought about that. You know, the, the structure of the deal is seven years, and it's in a place that my family and I wanted to be. Um, you know, as a veteran player, when you get that opportunity and you, you think about everything that it could be, it, it becomes a, an easier decision. I think that 
of course, when you hear, yes, the team wants to add, the team wants to win, um, those are things that at, my, at the point in time where I'm at in my career, um, that's exactly what I want to do. Other questions? We good? Okay, we will have our next uh, introduction here in just a few minutes. So, thank you. <laughs>